Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. A massive weekend of sales. In total, we had 28 items sell, and that was a revenue of 1,280 bucks. When you take out the fees, the post, and the cost of goods, I've made myself $670 in just this weekend alone. So let's set the timer for four minutes. I'm gonna take you back home and show you all of those items that sold. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna run into this thrift store that I've got behind me and try and find some really cool stuff and hopefully bring it to you once I've shown you those items. So let's get into the first category, the DVDs and the video games. So we had a total of nine sales in this category, $281 and a $30 average sale price. So don't tell me there's no money in DVDs. These three just here, they sold between $12 to $14, just your entry level style DVDs, but still really good to have ticking away. Video games, I've got this one here, it sold for $17.50. Pandora's box on the Nintendo DS, that one sold for $23. And I bought this one just on Thursday, The Binding of Isaac, it's a PC game. $24.50 plus $20 of international postage. So that was a good one. Uh, I've also got Steven Universe seasons one, two, and three on DVD here. Really good TV series, $45 for that one there. The complete box set of Sex and the City, every single episode sold for $60. And then Monkey, the complete collector's edition. This one is a big bolo DVD, guys. Sold for 70 bucks. So $281, nine sales. There's plenty of money in the DVDs and video games. Now, we had some pretty good success in the shoe category. We had six sales come through, $395 in revenue. That works out to an average of $65 per sale. The first one that I've got here are the Nike Windflows. Now, these are a pair of entry-level shoes, but they still got a $40 sale price, which I didn't think was too bad. These Adidas footy boots are listed within an hour of them selling. They sold for $45. Uh, I've also got these as well in my wholesale bundle that I'm doing for the Ultra Running Shoes. If you haven't heard of this brand, it's selling really well for me. These are a pair of kids US size two and a half, still managed to get a $45 sale price on those. Uh, these are an awesome pair of shoes, found these only a couple of weeks ago. The New Balance Fresh Foam 108Os, they ended up selling for $70, I think it was on them. And then we've got the Ultra Riding Shoes in the men's category. These are the Ultra Torrent 3.0s and they sold for $95. But the best of the bunch were the 97s, the Air Max 97s that I picked up in Thursday's trip to the thrift. They ended up selling for a hundred bucks. This is a category I really love to sell, guys. The snapback hats. I do quite a number of them. We've had three sales come in over the weekend. This vintage streets hat I picked up in a garage sale for a dollar, and it's ended up selling for thirty-two dollars fifty. I've only held on to it for about four weeks to get the job done there. I've also found this in yesterday's flea market run. I paid five dollars for this. It's a Team New Zealand America's Cup. 1995 vintage hat and I got a $40 sale price in just 21 minutes on eBay. Such a quick mover. Probably could have got a few more dollars for that one. And then I picked this one up in an op shop for a few dollars. The Bunnings Warehouse Fedora hat ended up selling that one for $30 as well. So a total value there of $100 for three hats and I've only paid the $8 to get my hands on them. We've done all right in the clothing section as well. I've got four tops to take you through. The first one is this Nike running top. That one sold for $21.95 free postage. This one as well, the Brooklyn Next basketball top. I bought this in a trip to the thrift just a couple of weeks ago. Sold for $27.50. I've also found this one as well, the Ralph Lauren Blair long sleeve denim button up shirt. That is an absolute cracker. Could have got a few more dollars for it, but sold it for 32 bucks. And then we've got the old school vintage Nike airliner size large men's polo shirt. That one sold for $32 as well. Three pairs of shorts sold for me as well. We've got the RVCA pair of boardies here coming into the summertime. They sold for $22.50. I also had these as well. Really cool pair of vintage style rusty board shorts. They ended up selling for $32.50 and they were an awesome find. I've actually got two pairs of them to sell. And then the last one as well is this Abercrombie and Fitch. I found these board shorts and they sold for $30. So no pairs of jeans selling, just the boardies obviously coming into the summertime over here in Australia. Now, back when I was buying horrendous items in the op shop a good year ago, I bought these Banjo Patterson books. There were two of them. They're really big, thick, heavy, and they're actually gonna cost a lot of money to ship out. Well, I finally got them to sell. I paid $5 for them, and they've ended up selling for $35, I think it was. But the issue there is there's gonna be so much money in postage costs. This is where I've leveled up the game. I've spoken to so many of you guys about this board game that just goes on to sell well. Bought it in a flea market just a week ago. It sold for $75, guys. This board game is an absolute cracker. I almost think it's my favorite favorite item to find just simply because of how quick it sells for and how cheap you can buy it for. I think I did have to pay about $10 for this one in the thrift, but when I turned it around the space of two weeks for 75, never a concern. <laughs> Thank you.
Hey guys, welcome back to The Thrift. I've been able to find this corduroy and forex bit of beer hat. Now this one will turn into about $40, not too bad off just a $4 grab. I found this toy that was absolutely creepy, had a $25 price tag on it, but the girls in the op shops are clearly checking price points. This one goes for about $75 if you can find it. That was super scary and I could not get it to stop for at least five to 10 minutes. Jumped into the miscellaneous section as well, guys. This was a $5 spend here. Had some accessories for the GoPro. Always a good brand to be finding, and uh, that should turn into the full $35 per the comps, I dare say. Um, found some uh, DVDs as well. The Steve Irwin Crocodile Hunter. You can always rely on this guy. What an absolute legend. Should turn into about $25. Not bad off a $1 spend. And some notable mentions in the clothing section. Got the Carlton Bitter vintage t-shirt here. $4 price tag, but there was some holes about it. Also had the Treasury Casino Brisbane. Bullets number 30 jersey. This was the MBL Authentics. Really cool jersey until I turned it around and then I saw old mate Pistol Pete has gotten the way. You can have it back, mate. tell you what the silly season is definitely here guys over the weekend I had my Christmas party an opportunity to get away from work and just catch up with my co-workers and basically just celebrate what has been a pretty good year and if you've been around it for a little while now you would have remembered that I put out a video last December on my five goals for 2021 what did I want to achieve for this year well I can tell you right now that I've been able to achieve three of the five goals that I set for myself back in December last year and even though I missed two of the five goals I actually wasn't really overall too disappointed about the overall results let, let me explain so the first goal was to achieve hundred thousand dollars in gross sales first goal is I want to achieve $100,000 in gross annual sales in 2021. This one probably means the most to me. It was probably my biggest goal that I had throughout the year to try and do 100,000 in gross revenue. That is a lot of work and $91,000 has come through eBay revenue and the other 11 odd thousand dollars that we're up to now has come through Instagram, Facebook Marketplace and different other avenues of selling my items. But the majority has come through eBay but ultimately with two weeks to go left in 2021, I'm now up to $102,000 in revenue and I've been able to tick off that big, big goal. My second goal is that I will secure a low cost storage unit by June 30, 2021. So I'm not too disappointed about not achieving this goal because I quickly realized into the year that putting my money into a storage facility was actually the wrong move. And I probably shouldn't have set that as a goal initially. I've got about 1300 items in my eBay store at the moment and that doesn't require with the setup that I have here at mum and dad's to be going out and spending money on a storage facility set up. Maybe down the line, mate, might be something that I do, but the money that I was gonna put into that, I continued to put into into new stock and that allowed me to hit other goals like my $100,000 in gross revenue. My third reselling goal for 2021 is that I will build supplier relationships and will commit to a wholesale agreement in Q1 2021. So I've had good and bad experiences when it comes to wholesale uh, this year. I went down the path of going with a supplier that I found and unfortunately it just did not work out at all. $1,500 was spent and I've only generated about a $200 investment back. So um, really not too good there, but I have gone down the Facebook marketplace path and I bought the ultra running shoes off somebody. Um, there were 32 pairs of shoes at 15 bucks a piece, all brand new. That turned into about two and a half thousand dollars worth of revenue. And then the other one as well has been all the DVDs that I've bought in bulk off Facebook Marketplace as well that's generated thousands of dollars. I used to think that wholesale was the be all and end all of a reselling career. You need a bulk inventory coming in through a supplier of a wholesale agreement, but it was just not the case. My business model will never be a wholesale supplier path. I've got too many great options here at my local op shops. And I've really kind of learned a lot about wholesale and the fact that it's probably just not for me. But in next year, 2021, I'm currently at 1,200 subscribers. And by December 31 next year, I do want to hit 10,000 YouTube subscribers 
by the end of the year. Man, I really did throw everything at this number or this goal that I had for 10,000 by the end of the year. I published three videos every single week. I never missed an upload for the entire year. And that in itself is goal achieved in my opinion. We're currently sitting at 5,621 subs. We're not quite at the 10,000, but I'm just gonna keep plugging away. I'm gonna set myself a goal to hit 15, maybe even 20,000 for next year. Uh, because I really do think it's a snowball effect to YouTube. You just got to get the ball rolling and then from there things can explode pretty quick. So still waiting for my time to come, but so far really enjoying the process here on YouTube. Is that I will move out of home sooner than we think actually by March 1st, 2021. I'm out of here. So this was a really big goal that I was able to achieve to actually fend for myself, live off the eBay revenue that I'm generating. Uh, it was really cool. It ended up being a little bit later, the 1st of September. It's been about three months now that I've lived out of home and I'm still surviving, still being able to fend for myself, which is really exciting because you know, when you are living at home and you're getting all the benefits of free rent, you can't really say that you're working for yourself. But by the time you're actually out of home paying your own bills, that's where it becomes pretty serious. So I'm absolutely stoked about that. A really big goal that I wanted to tick off this year and I've been able to achieve it as well. So look, I definitely deem 2021 to be a, a, a huge success. The fact that I'm still here talking to you with the camera on, it really tells me that I'm enjoying what I'm doing and I'm passionate about it and the sales figures and the results and everything else is, is putting me in a position where I'm still motivated to keep going. And really a lot of it is down to the fact that you guys are continuing to tune in and watch these videos. It, it motivates me to keep making them. So I can't thank you enough for your support throughout the year. I've got some massive plans in place for 2022, so much so that I'm actually not gonna detail them in a video this year I'm going to keep them to myself and I know that I'm pretty good at achieving you know what I set myself out for I'm, I'm pretty I, I like to think that I'm a pretty driven person so I don't think I need to put it into video format but I will give you two things that I am considering for next year we're well, not considering two things that will happen next year how about that the first one is going to be I will achieve hundred and twenty thousand dollars in eBay revenue and the way that I'm going to do that is that I'm going to hire somebody to help me 15 hours a week three days a week and I think if that assistance can come into it two things are going to happen. One, I'm going to generate $120,000 in revenue. And the other one is I'm going to be able to work on the future plans that I've got for this business. Right now, I don't have any time. You guys know how hard I work. Every single day of the week, I'm chipping away, but it's on daily menial tasks. I need to be focusing on future aspect type stuff and therefore I need time to do that. So I'm going to get somebody to come in. They're going to do those 15 hours a week. They're going to help me with the day-to-day -day stuff, the postage and the listings, and I'm going to get into the big picture future plans. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing all of this explode in 2022. Um, that'll be it for me, guys. Appreciate you being here. My 30% clubbers, I know you're still here watching and I can't thank you enough for everything that you have done this year for me and, and for this channel. Thank you so much for your help. Um, I'm gonna leave it there because I've been rambling for a little bit. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you soon.